I think we're, we're uh, coming off a, a game we didn't play real well in. I don't want to take anything away from, from Iowa. Uh, but uh, they outfought us. They outhustled us. They got every loose ball. Uh, we didn't win many 50-50 balls uh, in that game. And uh, that allowed them to uh, play with a lot of confidence. And they got going. And uh, I think Garza established himself and showed everybody why he's a player of the year candidate. But uh, uh, they made the plays when they had to. We had a lead, four point lead, five, to, five and a half to go. And, and um, you know, missed, uh, turned it over three times, committed three fouls, of which were just silly fouls, reaching and grabbing, and uh, put the wrong guys on the line and, and uh, uh, couldn't hold the lead. So. Uh, give Iowa a lot of credit. Uh, tough environment, tough place to play. They made the plays, and and uh, and we did. And so I think we've rectified that here in the last uh, couple days. And um, you know, it doesn't uh, as 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 with any opponent when they come in, it's they're all hard. And you get another great opponent in Maryland, and uh, I don't know, eight eight nine in the country, and and um, arguably have the most talented player in the country in in Smith. So. Uh, there, uh, Josh is having a great, great year. He's having a great Big Ten season, shooting 50 plus percent. Uh, Anthony Cowan is, uh, uh, you know, one of the uh, better point guards, not just in our league, but in the country. Four-year starter, and uh, uh, and then Aaron Wiggins. Uh, they've changed, bringing him off the bench, uh, getting up seven, eight threes a game. Uh, very, very good shooter, hard matchup. So this is a team that's that's really well balanced. Uh, and um, has a lot of really talented pieces. <clears throat> Brad, it, it seems like in, in the Big Ten, you know, almost every team has an elite big man. You know, Oturu Garza and, and now Smith. What are you seeing Kofi kind of learn and, and take from all, all of these challenges that he's facing? I hope a lot. Um, yeah, you know, I think they're, they're all different. You know, he's not going to go out there and be uh, sticks, you know, shooting seven, eight, nine threes a game. Uh, but uh, there, there are things to, that, that he can pick up from all those guys, from Garza, from you know the, the work to the, the contact to uh, the running to what, whatever it may be, the wedging. Uh, you know, there's, there's continual things that he can, he, can, he can continue to grow with, and he does. And, uh, uh, and yet he poses some, some problems that each of those people have as well. But uh, uh, he wasn't great the other day against Iowa, for sure. Uh, he he understands that, and and uh, but uh, he wasn't the only one either. <clears throat> Kofi had a big first half in that first meeting against Jalen Smith at Maryland. Uh, what did you like about what he did there? Obviously, he's gotten better. Jalen's gotten better. And uh, what are you seeing in that matchup? Well, I, you know, I think the the one thing that that uh, hurt us in that game a little bit was Kofi getting in foul trouble, and and he and his when his time on the court was impactful. Uh, Maryland's quite a bit different two months later than they were when we played them. Uh, this is a five-out team now. Uh, Smith is shooting uh, lights out from the three in conference play. Uh, he's shooting a lot of them. They're running actions to get him threes. Uh, where before it was, yeah, he was going to get some. Uh, but there were a lot more post-ups. And they've kind of flipped that. And uh, Mark has uh, really opened the court up. Um, and and uh, they're playing a lot to, uh, you know, those those threes. I think they're averaging 26, 27 threes a game, maybe in their last five. And and um, so it's a uh, uh, it's a different cover for 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 Kofi in terms of having to guard that. And uh, you know that's uh, you know something that uh, we'll have to be very dialed into. Brad Kofi kind of played it off saying that you guys have been in first place all year, but have you noticed kind of an extra energy knowing that sole possession of first place is on the line? And is that something you kind of want the guys fired up about going into tomorrow, or do you kind of try and temper that down to just another game? I want them to play for first. I mean, I, I, I think I think Mark's got his team probably ready to play for first too, or Tom or or Fran or Pat or whoever. I You know, it's – 
it's what we do. It's 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 we're playing to to win this game, and yeah, it just happens to be the right now the two teams that are tied for first, and and the winner gets sole possession. So, uh, I would expect nothing more than uh, both teams to to play to their best uh, capabilities. What would you may consider has been your team's biggest point of growth in the two months since you, you played Maryland last? Oh, I think you know we our turnovers are way down. I, th I think we've. Uh, I think we've become uh, more solid defensively. Uh, I think that was a growth game for us, uh, that we, we started to do, do a few things differently about that time, uh, on, especially on the defensive end, and, and guys bought in. Um, you know, and I, I think we're better in every aspect of the, of, of, of the game. But, um, you know, I think, you know, simply just not turning the ball over 20 times a game like we were early, you know, in early December. Uh, you know, it's probably the biggest area we've 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 grown. Brad, you mentioned obviously you want the guys to play for first, but how do you still keep principles of that nameless, faceless idea that you guys had mixed into this? It's what we talked about today. It's just it, practice was no different today than it was uh, going into Wisconsin or going into Michigan or going wherever. Uh, you know, and, and it was it was it's what we do, and uh, you know, you guys can make all the. And the fans can get all excited about, uh, you know, the the battle for first or whatever that is. And 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 be honest, we haven't talked about it. You know, it's been one of those deals. We you know we we know where we're at. We know where they're at. And it's just the next game on the schedule. And we still have, I don't know, eight, seven, eight more, nine more, whatever we have after that. So, uh, you know, and as you guys know, this conference is crazy. And and if you don't play, you know, all we're doing is trying to go out and play our best. And uh, you know, and that's um, against a really, really good basketball team. Brad, what have you emphasized with your team about attacking matchup zones like you saw against Iowa? And the easy thing would be to, look, hey, shoot them out of it. But if that's not happening, how are you guys attacking that? Well, we want the ball into the interior as much as we can. That's the one thing that uh, uh, we missed early in the, um, in the Iowa game was we missed Kofi. Four or five, six times we missed we missed Georgie three or four times, and uh, uh, yeah, you know we've spent a good amount of time. Uh, we'll see zone tomorrow, and we've spent a good amount of time this week working, you know, we're working on that. And uh, we, when we got the ball in there into the interior, we were really good against Iowa, and uh, but you can't go a whole possession and never throw it to the interior and get it to the paint. So we've got to be be better there. Speaking of Georgie's touches, are you satisfied with the number of shot attempts he's getting per game right now? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's the balance. I think it's the matchup. I think it's, you know, there's a lot of a lot of areas there. I would have liked to have seen him get more touches uh, in the Iowa game, uh, mainly against the zone because he's such a good passer and he's so good in that 12 to 15 foot area. Uh, we missed him a, a, a good amount of time. Uh, and... Uh, so, you know, I think every matchup's a little different. Every game's a little different. But uh, uh, I've got a lot of confidence when Georgie catches the ball, something good's going to happen. And, and uh, uh, you know, we've got to be able to exploit those matchups when they're in our favor. Brad, the bench has been primarily the, the three guys getting the most minutes. But how important have those guys been to this stretch of basketball to get you where you're at now? Yeah, so you guys look at them as bench guys. I look at them as good players. And, and their minutes are all – bunch up for me I don't I don't look at I mean yeah we're getting great productivity I you could you could arguably arguably say that you know Dre's been one of our two or three best players and that's kind of the way I look at him and uh, um, you know it's nice to have Allen back it's nice to you know he got his got his feet wet back got that feel again uh, made a couple shots um, he's huge Kipper's been 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 great and uh, so I, you know, I, I think it's 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 those guys know they're going to play and and they're going to play you know a lot of minutes and and they're productive pieces to us and uh, you know some nights uh, you know they're they're our best players and that's that's a nice problem to have is when you get, bring guys off the bench and 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 uh, know that you get you're getting that kind of pr productivity. Are you guys looking ahead to March at all? And does this stretch of just all the ranked opponents that you're facing prepare you for, for what's to come later in the season? No. 
we haven't talked about that one second. Um, again, that's for everybody else. Uh, you know, I think one of the beautiful things about this conference is you could you could arguably say I think I think that um, Michigan was ranked, Ohio State were ranked. Uh, I, mean, I don't know how many teams in our league have been ranked at some point this year. So it doesn't matter whether they're ranked now or whether they're have been. They're all really good. And if you don't perform, you're going to lose. And uh, uh, that's something that uh, will definitely help you as you move on and and you get it and you do get into postseason is knowing that you're you 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 you've been sharpened. You've been you've been you've had to perform every night, and that's that's one of the things that you. Uh, Obviously, you have to do in the postseason, or you go home. I think Ben might have had a game or two out of the boot, and he's been back in his last two. Just any update there on on his status or what's yeah, going on? Yeah, he's still. Um, uh, we're still awaiting. He had an MRI earlier in the week. Uh, I don't even know what today is. What is today? Thursday. He had one yesterday, so we'll wait to see how that is. Uh, and the results of that, uh, making sure he's completely healed. And beyond that, uh, it's, you know, he'll continue to stay in the boot to maximize his, the speed of his, of his healing. I think everybody's written about your ability to adapt and change. That's maybe the big story of the season, apart from being in first place. Would you talk about your... Uh, about benching a guy after his second foul and, and whether you have to think about that on an individual basis. Well, I, do, I do that a lot. I, I think about that. I think the situation determines that. I would, re, I would prefer to have guys have more opportunities to stay aggressive in the second half. Yet, that doesn't always work. Uh, if you feel like a game's slipping and you need that, that guy, if you feel like you're not getting quite the performance you need from – the guys that replaced him, you may go back with that. Um, you know, I've, I've, I, I try to do that in very short stints when I put a guy back in, um, as to not let them get fatigued and commit a lazy foul, not uh, necessarily have them in there where the opponent can isolate a situation to try to pick up a third. Uh, I know we look to try to do that sometimes, uh, depending on the situation. So. Uh, my main premise for it is to be be able to have the three fouls going into the second half and, and, and be able to stay aggressive uh, when you play in the second half when the game comes down to the end. And uh, so that's that's why I do that. It's not a every time deal, but it, it's, it's completely based on the flow of the game from that aspect. Has Kofi had to change his perspective? He talked today about trying to stay out of foul trouble, especially early in games. And I remember early in the year, you almost were trying to get him to be maybe more aggressive and not worry about fouling. Has he had to try to change his mindset now that he's an established guy at 7 feet, 290? Yeah, I, and I don't think that's something we've talked about a lot. I think it's it's based on the, the physicality with which certain guys play. You maybe see it a little more with a Garza or a uh, – Teskey or a Williams at Purdue, then you then, but you know I think it's it's um, you know we're it's a it's a physical league and and big bodies are going to hit and 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 uh, you know Kofi overpowered a lot of people early and you don't do that at this level so uh, I don't think it's a big deal I, I you know I think he's um, he's his value to us is important when he's on the court but uh, you know fortunately he's been pretty mature at uh, avoiding a lot of those situations this year. Brad, a lot of people over the last year or two have called Andres Feliz like a glue guy, like in, in saying that he's one of the better ones out there. I know you said, you know, he's maybe been one of the best two or three players and you don't really look at the bench the same way other people do. But do you see Dre as kind of a, a glue guy or is I don't know. Oh yeah, there's no doubt about that. Uh, I, 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 <clears throat> Dre's a coach. Dre's going to be a coach. You can, you can. Um, he thinks the game. If you ask, if you ask him, 
last game, go back last game, and we just did a new scouting report. If you go back and ask him what the plays are that Iowa ran, he'll give you every one of them. He'll give you every one. He'll name every call. He'll name every play. Whatever, and most mostly what everybody else is doing. Um, and and so he's a guy that everybody listens to because of him being so cerebral, him being very very intelligent. Um, you know, he was off the chart yesterday. Uh, I mean, he got in a mode yesterday where nobody could guard him. I mean, literally nobody could guard him. And you know, and yet. Um, there's a there's a respect there that everybody has uh, for him because of the way he plays, the way he competes, the way he uh, understands the game, and and guys appreciate that. So, um, you know, there's there's a there's a lot more to Dre than just what you see physically in the game, and uh, you know his mental approach, memorizing a scouting report, pretty impressive.